Hi, so we're continuing the series of five in five, five plant species in five minutes. And we're here on beautiful Bray Head. Um, and I have some plant species around me that uh, most people would probably walk past and think of as weeds. Um, but we're going to look at them a little bit more closely and uh, think about um, particularly the interactions these plants have with animals, actually. So the first species that I want to look at is this one growing here right in front of me and people are probably very familiar with it because it grows in a lot of lawns uh, and this is white clover um, and we recognise it from the white flowers and also from the classic clover shaped leaves. Now this plant species, uh, it, its Latin name is Trifolium repens and the trifolium comes from the fact that there are, uh, it's, it's from the Latin for three and, and leaf and when you look at the, the leaves they are in three parts and so this is where the trifolium comes from and the, and the common name the trefoil and the species name repens comes from the Latin for creeping uh, and this refers to the habit of the species which creeps over um, the ground and spreads via stolons and that's why it spreads in your lawn so the Latin name means this three-leaved spreading plant species and if we take a look at the flowers, um, what we think of as a, an individual flower is actually a flower head comprised of lots of individual florets. And each one of these individual flowers uh, has a classic pea-shaped flower. Um, and they're pollinated by insects and the insects have to push their proboscis, their tongue, down into the flower in order to get access to the nectar. And the reason that white clover is so widely cultivated is because it has these nitrogen fixing properties. Its, its root nodules contain bacteria which are able to fix nitrogen um, and this saves the, the need for spreading artificial fertilisers. And so it's often grown in amongst things, uh, in pastures, in amongst um, perennial ryegrass. So the second species um, is very closely related to the first one. Uh, and this is red clover. Um, and again, it's uh, as in the white clover, it has these three leaflets, so it's trifolium again, uh, and the species name this time is pretense. And this red clover um, is also very widely cultivated um, because it's very high in protein. Um, so it's been introduced all over the world um, for livestock feeding, and it's been introduced into New Zealand, into South America. And the thing with the red clover is actually the flower is much deeper than the white clover flower so it needs to be visited by an insect with a much longer proboscis and so in the case of New Zealand for example they had to introduce long-tongued bumblebees from England in order to pollinate the red clover. The next species um, is Plantago lanceolata. This is the ribwort plantain. And the reason it's called ribwort plantain is when you look at the leaves, if we look at the leaves first, um, it has these five strong uh, prominent ribs running down the leaves. So this is uh, ribwort plantain. Um, and this species, the flower head, actually looks classically wind pollinated. So the, the reproductive structures of the flowers are held out from the flower. There's no petals, there's no scent, there's no obvious way to attract insects, which you'd expect to see in, in most flowers. Um, but actually it does get visited by insects. Um, bees and some hoverflies will visit in order to collect the pollen uh, from these exposed anthers. And it's possible, again, this is a species that's been introduced all over the world. Uh, and it's possible in some parts of the world um, it has become more likely to be insect pollinated than it actually is here. And apparently the leaves of ribwort plantain have been used uh, for um, medical use um, because they are very good when they're chewed up uh, and applied to open wounds. Uh, they can actually prevent infection and stop the bleeding. So the next species um, is this one here. This is a meadow buttercup. Um, and there's lots of different kinds of buttercup and the meadow buttercup um, has these very deeply lobed leaves and these beautiful bright yellow um, buttercup flowers. And there's a very closely related species, um, which is the creeping buttercup. And the creeping buttercup, you can see the leaves of the creeping buttercup um, are in uh, three leaflets, but they're, they're not as deeply lobed as the meadow buttercup. Um, the, the bright reflective flowers of both kinds of buttercup um, attract insects, but also have a role in thermoregulation of the, of the flowers. And the buttercups actually contain toxic chemicals which make them very acrid to the taste um, and livestock don't really like eating them very much except when they're dried out. So they're okay when they're dried out in hay and that acrid toxic taste is then gone.